Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm looking at the chats to see who's here. So uh, when I say good morning, good afternoon, good evenings, because I'm assuming that uh, everyone is at different parts of the world. I'm, it's on my present location, it's a few minutes past 8 a.m. So good morning to those who are at locations this morning, good afternoon. And good evening. If you're in Nigeria, it's it's um I think it's two in Nigeria. Um so hi. I was given a topic that is very boring. It's very boring. It's very boring, but very essential. It's a very boring topic. It's it's boring. Um, so when I say it's boring, it's not boring. I mean, it's like, oh, there could be more exciting things to talk about. However, um, and, and and my topic is on on building systems um, as a creator, as an entrepreneur. It's it's the type of thing. It's almost like a necessary. Is I want to call it a necessary evil, but it's not really evil. It's a great thing. Um, but for most most of us, we got into business or we got into what we do we got into this with passion so building systems for us is boring because it doesn't <laughs> i want to say it doesn't match the passion or the excitement with which we with which we entered um, um the thing so it's one of the things most owners of ideas and services and businesses it's one of the things they come to when their back is against the wall like when you're overwhelmed in your business or when the complaints are too much or too many um or when when everything is crashing you don't go to the exciting passion you go to the systems. So when I say it's boring, I know I know the the conveners gave this topic because it is necessary. Um, when I say it's boring, I mean it is boring in in relation to, you know, the excitement that comes with, you know, devolving your passion or just deploying your passion. Um, but you will get to see if you do your business long enough, you will get to see that the exciting part of your business is not what necessarily sustains your business. It's the mundane part of the business, if done right that sustains it now not starts it but sustains it um i'm trying to see i want to share something on my screen with you so our topic is developing effective systems as a creator or an entrepreneur. And I'll use the word systems and processes interchangeably so that, um, um, cause it's, it's one and the same, um, now I'm going to read the chats for a while because this is call and response. I'm not going to teach you. I don't necessarily do that. I, I have conversations. I don't have just 
teaching moments or I do have those, but I prefer them to be conversations. Uh, so I'm going to be reading from the chats in the first maybe minute or two. This is like, you know, all those examinations or those questions that your secondary school teacher will ask you. Who, who, can, who can define what a system is? Who can define what a system is? And who can tell me what systems they use in anything, whether in your business, in your creation? Who can, who can tell me? I'm, I'm going to read the chats. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here reading your chats. So tell me, if you're not talking, we're not going to talk because I want to, I want to be able to speak to your, your pain point, not just, um, not just teach on top of your head. So who can tell me what systems are and please don't go to a dictionary definition. If you, if you can try and tell me what you think systems are rather than just going to Google a, a, a dictionary definition. Yeah, I shall wait. All right. Since <laughs> systems are information we store, okay. I'm not necessarily sure what you mean. If you can expand that, it would help. Mm -mm 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 -mm. A combination of tools or people to simplify a process of achieving the goal. Patrick, Patrick, did that come out of your head? If it did, well done. Uh, if it didn't, God is watching you. Yeah. Um, as as group or individuals working for a common goal, a group or in or individuals working for a common goal. Okay. Systems are like procedures, a step-by-step -step process to achieving an aim. Fantastic. Now, I don't want to, I want us to just have a broad understanding. Just systems are a breakdown of the way we do things. That's, I want, I want to, 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 I want to make this topic that is sometimes so tedious something that you will not forget. So I can go as high level as possible in, in defining a system, but I want you to take the simplistic, the like if you were explaining it to a seven year old, this is what you would say. I love it. Systems are like procedures, a step-by-step -step processes of achieving an aim. Yes, systems are repeated process designed to keep one moving forward. Fantastic. If you were explaining to a seven-year-old what systems were, you would say it's a... broken down... process of how we do a certain thing. We break down the, the process of how we do it. You want to peel an orange, you get a knife. That's one, the, one of the first things you do. So before you get to the end of eating an orange, you take the seven-year-old through it. 
what 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 are the processes what what are the steps what are the steps um and this is as as, as mundane and as granular as we can get the steps to achieving a particular goal and that steps could be in people that steps could be in your product the steps could be with processes but let's let's simplify this definition the steps or the broken down processes to achieving a particular goal so you want to peel an orange you get a you get a knife i'm assuming that the orange is already there if the orange is not there what do we do we go to buy the orange do we have a particular person we buy the orange from or do we have particular oranges we buy um and in the a child would say oh there is there is a store beside us where we buy the orange or there are two stores we prefer this store because this store has the organic oranges or whatever whatever so we say okay we buy it how much do we buy it for are we given a discount on it um um in it's it what systems do systems force you to think through what we use the word just for just if someone says oh how did you create this i just did it so i just <laughs> When I teach um, um, in the discovery center or the clients, or if we're doing a book study, I often say there's nothing like just, there's nothing, there's nothing like just. Just, um, I think it was Voltaire that said, just is the word or the phrase we made up to explain the effect, the known effect of unknown causes. Just is the word we made up to explain the known effects of unknown causes. So just is a word we use in place of a process we haven't looked at. It just happened. Well, how about we, we reverse engineer that? So just, for those of you who are note takers, just is a word we made up to describe or explain the known effect of unknown causes. There are unknown causes and we want to make them known. And this is the reason we wanna make them known. Everybody on this call falls into four brackets, four brackets and four brackets of competency in your business. There's four brackets of competency uh the first bracket and and i would like you as you listen tell me what brackets you fall into the first bracket are the unconscious incompetent and this is not this is not this is not a jibe at at just like oh she called me incompetent no this is you are you are the, the phrase incompetent does not is not necessarily derogatory it is that i do not have a competence in these matters i don't have a proven system in this matters i don't have a replicable system in this matters i don't have a competence um so an unconscious an unconscious incompetent is someone that doesn't know and i'm sure you've heard those phrases they don't know but they don't know that they don't know that's an unconscious incompetent. You are unconscious to the fact that you are not competent in that, in that area. So you're an unconscious incompetent. Now with second, the second bracket is a conscious incompetent. A conscious incompetent says, huh, they're teaching me on, on developing effective systems. This is not as quote unquote sexy a topic as how to create $1 million in two days. However, 
this is the thing that causes you to create $1 million in two days. I do not know of anybody who is sustainably wealthy. Now, I'm very particular about every single word I'm using. I do not know of anybody who is sustainably wealthy who doesn't have systems. And this is coming from someone who started a business or started offering a particular service seven years ago and has never had a loss, a loss year. I've never, I've never, I've never had a year that we're just like, oh my God, we lost. No, from the beginning of the, those of you who know the programs I do, one of the the core programs of the Discovery Center is called the Blueprint of How. We started the Blueprint of How seven years ago. We've never had a loss on, on that event. And we've done it, we've done it in, in Nigeria, we've done it in the UK, we've done it in the US, we've done it, we've, we've done the Africa tour with the with the seminar. Um, some of you are uh, most of you are actually content creators or, or creators of services of product. So you would understand what it means to never, imagine that you have a product and you're just like, we've never had a loss on this product or on any product. It's not, it's, it's never a loss. And by not a loss, I'm just like, oh, there's always profit and always profit is because of of a system, of a system, of of several systems coming together to when you see something on the outside and you're like, oh, this program, they just, they just, every time is just sold out. It's nothing like just. Just is a word we made up to explain the known effect of unknown causes. So, I was talking about the different levels of competency. First one, unconscious incompetence. The people who don't know that they don't know say this is supposed to be on developing effective systems as a creator. You are not aware that you don't know about it. You're just like, yeah, I, I run my business. I'm good. You know, you might be an unconscious, an unconscious incompetent in this area. I'm not in every area. I am an unconscious incompetent in some areas in my life. Um, but in this area, you might be. Uh, you can be a conscious incompetent in the sense that you know, you know that you don't know about system. You know the importance of it, but you know that you don't, that's not your strong suit. You know that you don't know about it. You're a conscious incompetent. There is the unconscious competent. I don't know which is worse between a conscious or an unconscious incompetent or an unconscious competent. There is a unconscious competent means you know the thing, but you are not aware that that thing you do, there's anything to it. You're not aware that it is the difference maker in your business. You are not aware of the, like the, the key you use you just do it. You think, ah, oh, when I just do it, it just, remember that word, just. When I do it this way, things just work. You are, a, a, you are an unconscious competent. You know what to do, but you are unconscious of the effects of it. And this is this is this is as bad as being an unconscious incompetent because if you don't know what you are doing to create certain results, you will most likely do away with it um, and destroy the thing that brings you result without knowing. So this is even worse. Because and I see people do this key areas of their business. They 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 
They're unconscious in the fact that that is a key area of their business and they remove it. Let me give you an example, and I'm not going to give you a high-level example. I'm going to give you a nice example. The Akara, the person who sells Akara, for those of you who don't know what Akara is, I will define it. It is bean cake, fried bean cake. By the side of the road, if you live in any African country, they have the women that just you know create meals by the side of the road. It's in Ghana. It might not be Akara in Ghana. It's something else. But in Nigeria, there's, there's, it's called, it's, it's, it's akar, bean cake. Um, most, some of them <laughs> are unconscious competence. They know that what they do is necessary, but you will see them move location. Some stay in a particular location for a while, but some move and they are not aware that part of their competency is their location, is the fact that anybody can find them at that particular location. They were aware of it. They stay there for a while. But when they were moved or when someone else says, oh, maybe they can't stay there or maybe a regulatory Official says they can't stay there. They move without any forwarding address. So you're just like, where is the woman that used to sell a car here? And they're like, oh, she's gone. But gone to where? Gone where? Could she have told someone around her, maybe the gate man somewhere, oh, if people are looking for me, this is where I am. Most times they hardly do that because it's it's an unconscious competent thing. It's they're unconscious about the fact that location matters, and per location they're losing clients. Even though they were conscious of the fact that this location brought in brought in a profit, and then there's the last group. which are the conscious competence. The last group, which are the conscious competence. Okay. The conscious competent not only know, they know that they know. They know that they know. Your major job as a content creator, as a as a, as a creator, I, I keep saying content, um, but but um, it's not even about content. You're a creator when you create a product. You're a creator when you create a service. You're a creator as a business owner. You're a creator when you write a book. It's, it's one thing to take an idea from intangible and make it tangible. That's why we call you creators. You are, for anything, that has manifested tangibly. You've created it. Um, so your job as creator is to move from unconscious incompetent to conscious competent. And systems are the fastest way a system is the fastest way to move from unconscious incompetent to conscious competent a system a system or a set of systems fastest way I will put up, I don't know if I can share my screen with you. Yes, I can. Let me see. Let me tell you, I want to show you a, I want to show you why this matters regardless of any goal you have i want to show you why this matters bum, 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 bum.
bum, bum, bum. Can you all see? Can you see the, the quote? I put up a quote by James Clare. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. You do not rise to the level of your goals. I don't care how lofty that goal is. I don't care if the world is shouting, this is a goal. Oh my gosh, you have a great goal. I don't care. I don't care if you woke up and thought, oh my God, I'm God's favorite child. Because this idea that I have or this business that I have is amazing. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. In other words, you owe your goal systems. You owe your goal. If you take your goals as importantly as you claim you do, you all your goals, you all, you all the goals to have anything, do anything, be anything. You owe them systems. A goal is a systemic result. It is not a passionate result. I'll say that again. A goal is a systemic result, not a passionate result. The start of a goal is a passionate result. The, 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 the start of it is a passionate result, but the achievement of it is a systemic result, not a passionate result. You start passionately, you achieve systemically. You start passionately, you achieve systemically. You want to cook jollof rice. You start passionately. You're just like, oh my gosh, I want to eat jollof rice. I feel like eating jollof rice. I've not eaten jollof rice in a long time. You start passionately. You achieve the goal systemically. What do you do? Do you just say, I feel like, I feel like eating jollof rice. You know what? Jello fries, follow me. <laughs> no. You then, we do this in our everyday lives. We just don't do it with our business. You start the goal and then you, you move into systems. What, you, what do you do? Remember I said just is a word that we've created to describe the known effect of unknown causes. I was just, I was just hungry. I just did jello fries. No, you just, you didn't, you didn't just do jello fries. <laughs> you passionately wanted jello fries. And then you got up. You can't sit down in a particular location and do jello fries. So you got up, you reversed engineered jello fries, maybe from where you were. You reverse engineer, but we reverse engineer in a split second. Think of what you do when you want to eat a particular thing. I'm using jello fries. Maybe I want to jello fries this afternoon. I don't know. Anyway, so you sit down and you start reverse engineering it. You say, you start thinking, hmm, I don't know if I have tomatoes. I don't know. Oh, tomatoes these days. Maybe let me not go and waste my tomatoes because tomatoes is, is gold. I'll use only one. I'll use, I'll use, I'll use paste. I don't know. Oh, I don't have rice. Okay, so I will go and get rice and and I will okay, I have onions. I don't like chopping. Oh, I have those things that you start reverse engineering. And what you're doing, if you could, if you could see the your your brain waves, it would be like neural pathways firing to each other. Remember. What, what, what quantity of rice was left the last time we did 
it would be like the matrix working in your mind to 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 make the jello fries. You start passionately. You achieve systemically. After you bring out everything, you then put the rice on the fire. As you put the rice on the fire, you don't. <laughs> you don't. You are not supposed to. Cook the white rice until it's full boiling potential. If you're if you're supposed to do jollof rice, you're supposed to stop. You're supposed to parboil at some point before you add every other thing. Now, if you cook till the end, till the rice is fully cooked, you're not going to go to. You're not. You're not eating jollof rice. You're eating rice and stew. So we do this in our everyday life. And guess what? Where you don't do this, where you don't apply those systems, you don't get the goal of jello fries. Some of you, <laughs> some of you were on the way to jello fries. And then because you didn't follow a system, you veered into rice and stew. As it is in life, so it is in your business. You were on the way to jello fries. You were getting there, you were getting there, but you missed a system. Maybe you boiled the rice too much. Before you know it, you have risotto. Risotto is those things that the Italians eat that look like jello fries, but it's just like mede mede to us. Who know that we want our jello fries to be single, single, single with a firewood hint. Because you did not apply a system or because you missed a system, you missed the goal. You can have fantastic goals. If you miss the system, you will, you, you will shortchange yourself on your goal. And I'm not using any high level example yet because I don't want you to feel a lot of people who teach about systems make it so difficult that you feel like, oh, I have to go and hire consultants to do a system. I'm like, no, 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 no. You use systems. You use systems in your daily life. You, you are just an unconscious competent. You use systems. You use, you use many systems to get here today. You... You got up, you knew you had to have a bath. You use systems to do that. You ate a meal, you use systems to do that. You drove out to pick up something, you use systems to do that. We use systems in our daily life. It's just that when it comes to our business, we think we increase the level of difficulty for systems. That's, that's where we get stuck. Something you do on a daily, you could not be where you were without using systems. When, a, when, a, when you are born, you don't have systems. It's why babies don't even know how to poop. There is the, remember a video about a baby and the baby was, they say, when you see a baby, like, struggling, like, just doing, um, it's, 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 it's not crying. It's like wincing and, and struggling. It's like, uh, uh, they're like, oh, no, it's not hunger. It is the baby developing the muscle that is necessary to poop. They are, they are making the mind and the body connection on how to poop. Can you imagine that there was a time in your life where you didn't know how to expel gas? You didn't know the system of how to expel gas. Imagine, and I'm using this very granular example so that you will not forget. Some of you are like, ooh, use you love the example. No, we're going to stay with your mess. 
if you watch videos or for those of you who have babies or for those of you who watch, I'm watching a lot of baby videos now because my, my sister is expecting. So we're going to stay with the baby examples and I have to watch these videos. They show you many tips and tricks to get a baby to release gas, either through a burp or just the normal way to release gas. So they're like, oh, you have to push the baby's leg this way. You have to rub the baby's back. You have to hold the baby's face up. And I'm just like, look at this creature. You mean you don't even know how to expel gas? That's what causes colic. That's what causes just babies being uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable, but they don't know how to expel gas. They don't know the system yet. They haven't developed the muscle. So someone has to help them. You are a walking, breathing mechanism of systems. How you walk is a system. How you talk is a system. How you, how you eat is a system. Then imagine that you came to your business and you suddenly did not have systems. told you systems were hard and why did you believe them it's like oh, it's so hard to develop systems no you no maybe the person who taught you systems but it's easy it's it's easy it's what is hard is the constant application of it what may be difficult would be the constant application of it but you develop systems without thinking. So I'm going to give you an example. Let me give you an example. I... I've been a part of the John Maxwell team from 2011. I'm a founding partner of the John Maxwell team. Uh, and I served in the President's Advisory Council. In other words, the president of the John Maxwell team, we're looking at, and we have a collection of over, I think we're right now up to 200,000 coaches around the world. Coaches, speakers, trainers, just the best in the business. Um, um, and we set out from the beginning, 2011, to build that. It didn't exist in 2010. We started in 2011 to build the John Maxwell team. That is a, a conglomeration of leaders around the world and coaches and speakers. Um, and I remember one of the first things I learned from John Maxwell and his team was this dogged penchant for systems. You want to have a lean team, you better have massive systems. Because John had a lean team for a company that had 200,000 coaches, speakers around the world, was doing millions and millions in dollars. Um, the company had six, only six core, core um, um, members of their teaching team, the teaching team staff, six, only six. And I was like, wow, this is such a great system. And I, and I loved it because Coming from Nigeria, I mean, Nigerian systems where it was just like, oh. I mean, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I saw everything scripted. Every, by everything, I mean everything. Why? This is what a system does. It helps you duplicate what worked. It makes it replicable. It makes it consistent. And it's convenient. It makes everything convenient. It may be a tad bit difficult at the start, but the, the job of systems is for convenience. 
is that if I build a house, I don't want to build a house and then not know how to build another. Some of you build an amazing product, but you don't know how to build another because you didn't reverse engineer your system. What caused this product to be amazing? What caused this, this um, um, what caused this, this, this move I made to be successful? And so what we do is we reverse engineer everything. Everything is reverse engineered. Every single thing is reverse engineered. In fact, we, we were so, so granular. After I finished teaching, we would transcribe the call. Every single word I said on the call, we would then, I would then remove the words that were not necessary. So the words that were not necessary or the words that didn't add as much value. After I finish a call, and this is, this is still what I do, I would transcribe the call, remove the ones that are not necessary, maybe put in better examples. I use the Akara woman on this call. This is the first time I'm meeting you guys. If I was meeting you guys next week, I would come with a better example. I would remove that, put in a better example, make it tighter, deliver it the next week. As at the next week's call, I would transcribe again what I did, write it out, remove anything, put in better examples, tighten it again, deliver it the third time. Do you really think if I do that 20 times, you can match my content? The problem is you, you went on IG live. You went last month. You thought everybody was like, ah, oh, so great. Ah, oh, this person knows her onions. You did nothing to reverse engineer that system. What worked about this? What did they applaud on? Where did I get the most likes or loves as I was teaching? What point? are people who gave me feedback what point did they take in the most oh i will double down on this you are so busy building new 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 things you are not improving on the old you are too busy building new things because you somehow think that that's what the people who are successful do i remember a time that that's 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 as far from the truth as night and day the successful people double down on what is working i remember a time i asked john i'm like okay now that i'm doing this i'm 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 a leading teacher speaker trainer like what what is your one advice to me per se and he said master the mundane Master the mundane. Master the mundane. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, master, master the way you speak, even though you know how to speak. Master it. How do you do it? You reverse engineer. I then had a speaking coach who would reverse engineer everything I said and said, oh, this is where, this is where you had highs. This is where you had audience participation. This is where, and then we will double down on this. Are you doubling down on what is working or are you just building new things? How, how did your last product and service go? Did you reverse engineer it? Or did you just go ahead to build something new again? And then all of a sudden, that's why you get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm tired. I'm creating, I'm creating, I'm creating. Ha, ah, you know, this business, you can't satisfy customers. They'll always want something new. They'll always want something new. My business presently, the Discovery Center, is built up of 80% of, of, of return business. N not, not new. In fact, we have to beg the return business sometimes when we have seminars. We have to tell them, please, please, give, give space for the new people to come in because... It's, it's people returning 
for seven years. Why? At every point in time, we master the mundane. We try to make the thing that we've done better. Why? There are people that come for the same seminar. They've come for it five times. The same seminar. The blueprint of how there are people who are like, I've come for it seven times. I've come for it five times. I've come for it three times. It's the same seminar. But we do what I just tell you. We say, how can we give a, a, a good, how can we give someone who returns a better experience the next time than they had the first time? Now, because I could see it, I could see it done by somebody who was in the top of his field, John Maxwell, the president of the John Maxwell team, Paul Martinelli. Paul Martinelli is actually the was actually the president of the John Maxwell team, not John. And I was just like, ah, oh, I could I could see this guy. He's a wizard at systems. Paul and Paul, I, I will tell you about I will tell you about this because the first type, the first step to Developing systems is modeling excellence in someone else. You don't just ordinarily develop systems by yourself. You didn't know how to bath until someone showed you how to bath. You didn't know how to cook until someone showed you how to cook. I want you to reverse engineer your own life. You modeled excellence in someone else and built a system from it. The fastest way, and I'm all about speed because I'm not, I didn't come to this life to suffer to just be creating and creating. I'm, I'm, I'm all about speed. I don't know how you did it so I can do it the same way or even better. You model excellence to produce systems. Why? Because we all start as unconscious incompetence. We all start that way. Even though you have a fantastic goal, you are first incompetent. Virgil says, oh God, I'm having no battery. Vir Vir Virgil girl, go, go, go and charge your phone. Um, so you first model excellence. And so when I wanted to build idea, I just went to who, who has excellence. And it was Paul Martinelli. Now, let me tell you about, about this person. This person, Paul... Um, was a high school dropout. You would call it secondary school in your, in your whatever countries you're from. So high school dropout started a janitorial business. So by, by janitorial business, it, it sounds nice, but no, this is what it means. This person was cleaning floors. We all know what that is. Person around you in your office that cleans the floor. I'm talking about the person of the John Maxwell team from high school dropout to cleaning floors to creating six multi-million dollar businesses six it's one thing to create one it's another thing to create six so i'm like this person knows systems if the person can continue to create when i met him he had created four i've seen him create two more I've, I've seen behind the scenes, and one of the things that I've seen a lot is that he is the master of systems. Lean team, but crazy systems. And so that's the person I started modeling. How does he teach? He was the one that taught me how to script. This scripting thing I taught you about. He was the one, because I taught in his team, we would have to script. He would give me his script. Because if you do that, imagine your script, you can give somebody else to teach once you've taught the person how to teach. He would teach about um, um, giving life to the spoken word. So there's a spoken word course of say you're recording your video so that you don't sound mechanical. There is a course on that. 
And I would model, I would model excellence. I would see what he does before meetings. He would have a checklist, a TikTok, everything in place. I would model that. Your first step to creating excellence is find someone who does what you do, but does it excellently. Model that. Don't just be like, come and show me what you are doing. You come and show me what you are doing. You come and show me what you're doing. I'm just like, does it, is it? Is the person supposed to model excellence to you or are you just taking snippets from different people? I remember someone, John Maxwell also said, look, the reason you want to model excellence is the world mass produces average. The world mass produces average. So once you find someone that is excellent at something, model, model, model them. That's, that's how you've built systems in your life. That's how you will build systems in your business. Now, with my business presently, even in preparing for this call, there were things that I saw or, or, or didn't see, and I would tell my, my program's lead, I would say no to that. Note that so that we can create a system for it or improve the system on it. Where anything failed in my business or, or was wrong or I got feedback from the client that, oh, they didn't like this. I'm like, if something is wrong, if something is wrong, it is a system that we did not have or a system that we did not follow. If something is wrong within your 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 businesses your if something is wrong even to money the 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 wealth you don't have or have if something is wrong it is i can trace it and i and i coach i coach a lot of people leaders in industries and, and geniuses whenever something is wrong it is because of a system they either don't have or a system they did not follow so, for instance, those of you who do bulk meals, right? You can. I will give you an example of this. If you do bulk meals, if you ever sent out a bulk meal or an SMS, you know you can personalize a bulk meal. You have those places where they say insert name here, right? You would say it's it's what makes you in the bulk meal say um fun. We are glad to have you. It's a bulk meal. It just it just means that you can insert the name here. I'm sure that some of you have seen meals and I've had it in my business a lot more times than I'm comfortable with where you see the mail and then you still see that part that says insert name. They did not remember to insert name. So you can see insert name when someone should have put the name, but maybe in writing the person did not did not remember that th that was a place to feel. If you've never done a bulk um, mail or SMS, just just stay with me, right? If you've if and if you've received a mail that had insert name, someone missed something. Now, every time I see that within my office, and if you send a lot of bulk mails, you will you will get one at some point in time. That 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 you didn't do well. That the insert name is still there. And so one day I was just thinking, this is a problem. How can I solve it? What is the system that I don't have or the system that I am breaking to create this, this thing? Because I don't want to see so five weeks. It can be great mail. Then one week you don't read the mail and you just say, oh, they forgot to put name. And so I was thinking about this. I was like, what's the, what's the system? What's the, what's the solution? The solution is always in the system. What's the system? And I said, oh, this is the system. If we restrict every mail to having three parts where we can insert names, there may be three different paragraphs where we can insert names. At the end of every mail, whatever, before we click send, we should check the three parts. The problem is some mails, we call the people's name only once. Some mails, we call the people's name five times. So there's no system to this. So, okay, 
for every meal, let's mention the person's name in different places, maybe three times or in different places, maybe twice. That way we can check before we click send that the two places or the three places that should have insert name has that. Once you impute it into your document, it's a, it's a system. We have a system, usually before it would be that, oh, every department has to, every department has to submit their report at the end of the day, but that's tedious. It was tedious, it was tedious for me. It was tedious for them. So <laughs> recently I said, you know what? Everyone on the team, we, we have this group, chat and in, in, in the team team chat like everyone on the team just at the beginning of the day tell me five things you're gonna do tell me five things you're gonna do today and tell me at the end of the day so this is my five tasks for today and this is the report on the five tasks done not done blah blah blah, blah. It's simple. It's a system. Don't complicate your systems. You're complete. Maybe you're overcomplicating it. That's why you find it difficult. Don't overcomplicate it. In every complaint you get as a business owner is a request to do better. Every complaint means do better. You did not meet my expectation. The problem with you is that <laughs> your ego is stopping you from learning from complaints. You're just like, you're too defensive. You're too defensive about your business. Like, no, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like this thing. You're like, no, that's that's the way it's supposed to be. Because no, 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 no. Within every complaint is a seed on on building better systems. Within every complaint, there is a request to do better. Money is a reward. Money is a reward for providing a service. A service is what you provide to meet a need. Therefore, when someone says that the service that you provided did not meet a need, it means sooner or later, the money is going to be touched. I'll repeat that, that if I could draw a diagram, that's what I would draw. Money is the reward for providing a service. Money, service. What is service? What you provide to meet a need. When someone complains about the service, what they are saying is that you did not meet the need or you did not meet the expectation. And it leads them back to withholding the money from you. That's why money dries up within the business. So it's not that, oh, someone threw a charm on you and your business is not working again. It's that the services do not meet the need. But to do this effectively, you're wasting, you're wasting your complaints internally, externally, with vendors, with your team. You're wasting complaints by not building system every time there's something that goes wrong. Every time, in fact, every time there's something that goes wrong, do a, do a happy dance. Why? That thing has just exposed a system that you broke or a system that did not exist. When you first build your business, the gifts your business can give you is things going wrong. Why is that a gift? You start building systems. But we are too, we are too caught up with solving the problem. Our ego is too caught up with saying, ah, let them not say my business is not, you're not, you're not creating a system. The problems in your businesses or your life, and this applies to life as it applies to business, the problems within your life and your business are a gift. It is telling you there's a system you do not have or a system that you're breaching. 
value system you breached, you then got somebody that saved you breakfast. You broke your own value system. You got breakfast saved. Or you didn't have a, a filtering system for the type of person you wanted around you. Whatever. Whatever is wrong is a system you did not have or a system you breached in life as it is with business. I remember, and this is as granular. I remember, I, those of you who know Shola Animasha, he's like a photographer, great one. I, I, I mean, first time I was introduced to him, he was supposed to cover, take, a, take pictures of our event. We were doing a seminar and he was going to do the video and the pictures. And I remember when he, when we had the conversation, I said, I will send you, I will send you a brief. And he said, okay. And then I sent him the brief and then he called me back and he said, this is the most detailed brief I've ever gotten in my life. Why? You hire people to take pictures. I hire people and I tell them exactly what pictures I want them to take. The result is different. There are some pictures you'd be like, ah, oh, this guy didn't capture these. Oh, he should have captured these. Ah, uh ah, -uh. you're looking for, you didn't tell them. You didn't tell them. I realized it after maybe my first two seminars that, oh, this, this, I, this thing happened during the seminar, but I don't have any picture or video of it. So I drew up a system. This is what to take. I want to see, um, I want to see the pictures of the food because we always have the spread. I'm like, capture picture of food, group picture by staircase. I would have gone to do a Reiki of the place to know where the group picture should be taken. I'm not going to do it by chance. Um, take pictures of people entering the class. So because of that, we will put people in a room. There will not be people in the hall so that by the time the doors are open, there's a stream of people entering the hall and the video person can capture people coming into the hall rather than just one by one. I'm like, take people entering the venue when cars are driving into the venue, take that. So that when you're creating your video, you show people from the beginning to the end. It's, I'm like, I don't want you to just capture a picture of faces. I want, I want the emotion that happened in the seminar. Take the laughter, take the pictures of the laughter. Take the picture of the tears. I literally will script everything. Take the pictures of another person supporting every. He was like, there's, there's no way a photographer misses because they know exactly what they're supposed to take. The problem is that you left it to the other person to then use their initiative to give you what you want to see. When you become a systemic person, two things will happen. It will remove chaotic people from your life. It would remove chaotic circumstances from your life. I will, because we've overexceeded, um, um, I was just supposed to chat, have a nice chat with you about systems. I'm not, if you notice, I'm not going to the nitty gritty of, oh, this is how you do systems. No, do it however you want to do it, but create it. Do your systems. Don't, don't go and borrow a system that you can't even understand yourself. A system is just you reverse engineering what works, documenting it, improving on it. You do not rise to the level of your goal. You fall to the level of your systems. Now, before I leave, and I'm going to leave you guys soon, I have a webinar coming up with, with Paul Martinelli, the, the, the president of John Maxwell team I told you about, who was a janitor and built six multi-million dollar uh, um, companies. Um, there's a webinar coming up in August with him on how he... Or, on the systems and the strategies he used to build these things. And, and this is because we're having the blueprint of how seventh year anniversary. Now, the webinar 
cost $79, but if you're on this program, you have the seller discount. And so you you would you would get it for sixty dollars now. Now the reason I'm even saying this, I've never offered a program that is sixty dollars. This is going to be my cheapest program ever. For those of you who know me, my the cost of my programs are in the thousands of dollars. This is like my the the cheapest program I've ever offered. So jump on it, take advantage of it. But your there are only hundred seats for seller members because there's there's a whole you know other members the blueprint the discovery center members so you only get hundred seats at sixty dollars instead of seventy nine and the, this expires in seventy two hours we have to we literally open cart for you we haven't ever open cart for the rest of the world um, deal expires in seventy two hours you get to actually now build up on hearing how we both, how he taught me how to create systems, how he created system for being a high school dropout to someone who mops floor to building six multi-million dollar businesses and doing literally almost half a billion dollars in sales. Most of it, which was repeat, repeat sales or repeat customers. Um, this is, this is going to the driving home, this modeling excellence. Who would you rather learn from? I paid this person from 2011. I've done every course this person has offered. I think I've, I've almost invested almost a million dollars in learning everything he has to teach. So if you're getting to $60, I can guarantee you that it is a steal. His mastermind, just his mastermind, just people just learning directly from him pay about $10,000. So, um. So yeah, the link is, Ewan, can you put the link in the comments? So the link is the discoverycenter.com forward slash summit offer. The discoverycenter.com forward slash summit offer. I've just pasted it there. Um, and remember, 100 tickets available and it expires in 72 hours so that there's no weeping and gnashing of teeth. Nobody sending me a DM to say, Ma, please, I missed. I'm not in charge of that. I will not respond to you. Um, I will love you, but I will not be able to help. All right. So it has been my pleasure. I hope, I hope this call has just given you, first of all, the confidence to know that you're living, breathing, productive systems operator already i i hope i hope your level has increased from thinking you're incompetent to knowing that you are an unconscious competent we just have to make you a conscious competent build the systems build the systems for your dream your goal. I don't care what it is, who you want to marry, what you want to do, how you want your children to be raised, how you want your love life to be with your spouse, how you want your home to be, how you want, what profit centers you want to, how you want to create, what you want to be known for, build the systems. And then if you follow me on Instagram, it's Mfon Ekwa one on Instagram, you will see how there's no just I want you to start looking at people who succeed at what they do and just like, ah, I, I see, I see what they did there. Um, start reverse engineering either or, or also other people's businesses and saying, this is why this person things work. This is what they do. It's not a fluke. They do it over and over again. So it has been my pleasure spending this morning or afternoon or evening with you whatever time it is i will see you at the webinar if you join if not i will see you walking on the streets of instagram or any other place um have a fantastic day so over to you guys